So, this is the type of boat I'm gonna build. It's a proa, a Pacific proa. Now, this basically looks like a catamaran, but there's, there's some differences with it. Mainly that the wind is always coming from the same direction. Um, with this boat, the, the smaller hull is actually a counterbalance to the forces of the wind. So if, if I'm pushing, these are the forces of the wind, and uh, the AMA is actually a counterbalance to that force and keeps the boat upright. You can fill the AMA then with water or any uh, materials you need, like a welding machine or even drinking water. And that's one of the main advantages with this boat, because you're not dragging a heavy lead or concrete keel with you, which in a normal boat is right underneath here, um, which acts like a counterbalance and keeps the boat upright in that direction. But with this boat, you can actually use any weight that you're carrying with you. So there's no useless weight that keeps the boat or slows down the boat or uh, slows down the momentum of the boat or like to speed it up. When there's a little gust, this boat will speed up quite quickly. This proa that I'm gonna build is actually based on plans for madness by John C. Harris, uh, which he made together uh, with well, not really together, but he spoke to uh, Russell Brown. And uh, it's based on Gisero of Russell Brown, which he made in when he was 16, and then he updated a newer version in the 1990s, 1994. Um, and to understand how a proa works, you first really have to know how a sailboat works. And then the mast with the sail, whatever, I'm just gonna keep it this way. So, uh, with a normal sailboat, it's actually two wings working together. One wing is the sail, the other wing is the keel, together with the steering vane behind, so the steering keel at the back. Uh, and a wing, as we all know, has a nice and hydrodynamic or aerodynamic, which are quite similar to each other, shape like this. And when the wind comes this way, when the wind comes this way, the air flows over here and under here, but underneath the wing it goes it goes straight and underneath and over the wing, and just color it in here. Over the wing, it goes a bit curved, but they all need to meet at the same point here. So what happens is this wind, known as the Bernoulli effect, you can look it up on Wikipedia, uh, that's the, the known factor of how a wing works, is that the wind is actually blowing faster on the top of the wing and creates a lower pressure point right here all over here, and uh, this is going a lot slower. So the difference in pressure makes this wing uh, go. So here's a low pressure, L, and here's a high pressure. And that way the wing gets pushed upwards. And that's what creates lift. So it gets pushed upwards. So the wind going on top of the wing goes faster than the, uh, the wind underneath or the water underneath, and therefore the wing gets pushed upwards. With a boat, it's basically the same. The mast and uh, sail act like a wing, and the keel and the rudder, that's the, the word, the rudder act like a wing. And how they work together, is like this. So you've got um, you've got the rudder as a wing, and you've got the. Let me put the sail a lot bigger. Like this is also a wing, and the wind is blowing 
let's say, this direction, then this acts like this, the wind is acting on the sail as a wing and creates a force this way, lift. So if you imagine this is a wing, the, the plane would rise up like that or create lift, a force that keeps it in the air. But now it's a sail and it gets pushed that way. And the boat is actually going forward and that way the water in here is actually going always a little slightly bit uh, sideways because it gets pushed sideways a little bit. And therefore, the wing or the keel of the boat, which is also a wing, gets a lift that goes uh, that way. And as you can see, I've already drawn the direction of this uh, of the boat, but that's actually, the direction is a, um, a follow-up of these two forces working together. So if you add these two forces together, you come to one full, full on force that pulls the boat forwards. And that's how, that's how you go against the wind, but in a specific pattern. Now, how does a sailboat go upwind? And when I mean upwind, then if this is the front of the boat, so the boat should always go forward, is how a sailboat goes against the wind. So the wind comes from here. Well, how it does this, how it does this is through tacking. And tacking happens uh, like this but I'm just gonna erase the board for a second. So now, tacking. Tacking happens in a zigzag motion. So if we think about the wind, the wind in this case is gonna come straight from the top of the board. Straight from the top of the board. Oh shit, copyright issues. Um, and then the zigzag pattern goes like this. We go up, up, and then up again. As you can see, going up, 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 and that goes forward. Normally, you get a lot more uh, of a 90 degree-ish angle, but this will work as well. You're just going a bit slower. It doesn't matter. It's always in a zigzag formation going up the wind. Now, how does that work? Now, let me draw out those two wings again that work together. So, it's, there's the wing of the keel. And there's the wing of the sail, which in this case is it should keep a little bit like this. So this is the bigger one, is, is the sail. So a S for sail. And this is the K for keel. So we're going that way, but that's a result of two forces. And like I said before, if we, create, if we recreate what we did here uh, just a second ago, then the forces of the wind going this way is creating lift that way, uh, which is pushing the boat in that direction and kind of forward, pushing it forward like a, like a plane. Um, and the keel itself counter, counteracts that force with a lift in the other direction or almost 90 degrees, well, a complete 90 degrees, and then this results in a force where the boat goes forward. And therefore, you're actually coming closer to, let's say, the source of the, of the wind. And when you, when you get here, yeah, they're making a lot of noise outside. I don't know if you can hear it. I hope not. But if you get here, you, uh, let me draw it this way, with the keel 
like this. You've turned your boat already a little bit, and the sail is right here, or was right here. So again, the, the sail, I forgot to write, and keel is going this way, and then you want to go that way. So you flip. When you come here, tacking means that you flip your sail. Normally, it goes by itself, because you flip your boat, the wind is pushing on the other side, this side, and the sail itself flips by itself, and that's one of the, one of the main risks with sailing, is if you, if you don't watch your boom, and the boom is where your sail is attached to, so if you've got your boat with your keel and your mast, this section here, where the sail is then attached to, I don't know if that's clear, but this is the boom. And the boom then sh flies across your boat, and you're turning, and eventually, eventually, when you've got your keel like this, your sail will be like this. And again, if we do the same, uh, the same vectors of forces on this, then you've got the wind coming over this wing, the sail. So uh, the sail, and this is the keel, and the wing is pushing forward this way. The keel is also having a lift effect this way. And again, your boat is going in this direction. And that's tacking. So now you know how a sailboat works. How does it relate to this boat? This boat is very odd because with a normal sailboat the wind comes from both directions when you sail. So it can come from this direction or it can come from this direction. With this boat you have to position the boat in that way that the wind is always coming from the same direction. Always from the ama. This type of design comes from the Pacific, that's why it's a called a Pacific proa. There's also something that is called an Atlantic proa, which is basically the reversal, where the wind always comes from the other side and the ama is always pushed inside the water and acts more like a float than a counterbalance. But with this boat, the forces are nice and equal and the AMA just acts like a counterbalance, like a counterweight, keeping the boat upright. So, I hope you can hear me right. Uh, this is a strange kind of pattern. Now, doesn't it remind you of something? I've got here is a part of a bill that I've already paid. And if I let go of this, let's see if I can see how that moves goes like this, like a falling leaf. Now, if you look at this, this is the reverse. This leaf is actually falling that way. So if you turn this board upside down, the leaf would fall this way, that way, that way, that way, that way. Again, like this piece of paper. And that way, the boat shunts, so it goes that way. You flip the sail. This, the sail is now on this side. You flip the sail and it goes on that side, all the way around. And then the wing is right here, and you go that way. And that way, you, like a falling leaf, you go forward against the wind. There are some, a lot of advantages with this boat. First one is speed. Um, this boat can go pretty fast for the amount of money that you put into it. It's, it's a very long boat and very sharp, so it goes fast, but the water line is, is mm, mostly, I think, a meter or so in the water, which means you can go in very shallow water and up rivers or just uh, beach your boat on, on the beach. And uh, therefore you can reach all sorts of beaches and places that are usually with a normal boat a lot less accessible because the keel is so deep and you will drag uh, your boat across the sea floor before you actually 
arrive at the beach. The same with a catamaran. With a normal catamaran, you can also just go up the beach and uh, secure it there and then just jump off onto the beach and you're, you have arrived. One of the disadvantages for this boat is the amount of living space. So the living space itself with this design, I've seen people build a shack up here, which then acts like the counterbalance, but it just didn't look quite right for me. And in this, this boat, there's actually a living compartment here, which I didn't make yet, but this, this whole area would be a living compartment. And with this boat, it's actually quite small. So you're trading in speed for, um, for place inside the boat, which for me is quite fine because I really don't need a lot of space. Uh, I live outside most of the time and my ideal house would be a kitchen and a bed right next to each other, which is basically this. And then there's another desk with your marine radio and your um, navigation computer and uh, your instruments to read out how fast you're going and where you're going and what the wind is doing. Um, so there's not a lot of space, but I don't need it. So this boat is actually quite ideal for me and I really, really love the design. So if you want to follow my adventure on building this aluminum Proa sailboat, then definitely hit the subscribe button, hit the bell button so you don't miss anything and you'll get weekly updates on the build of this sailboat. Thank you for watching. See you next week.